Hey everybody, welcome back to Board Together Games. My name is David. I'm Ryan. And I'm Kathy. And thank you for joining us. And if you're new to this channel, Board Together Games is this YouTube channel where we talk about games that uh, we think are a good fit. Typically, this is what we do. We talk about mm -hmm. games that we think are a good fit for families and people who are new to the board gaming hobby and lighter games, lighter fare for the most part when it comes to games. But we also delve into some of the other things, and in fact, that's why my sister Kathy joins us many times, is to give her point of view. She is a heavier uh, gamer, gets into more of the strategic type of stuff, right? And of course, Ryan is a kid, so we've got that perspective as well. That's kind of why we do things, things the way we do them. So today, we are going to just kind of do a wrap-up, what we thought kind of video uh, for Origins 2018, which we just got back from a few days ago. And we're sitting down to record this. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, some of the games that we played while mm -hmm. we were there. Yep. Right? So we just want to give you some insight as to what we saw, what we did, a few pictures, a little B-roll footage, that kind of fun stuff. So thank you for joining us. Let's get started. Origins 2018 was June 13th through 17th of 2018. It was in Columbus, Ohio, as it is every year at the mm -hmm. Greater Columbus Convention Center. This year, the attendance was higher than normal. Uh, they grew yet again. Mm -hmm. I think there was overall... About 1,500 more badges sold than last year mm -hmm. for a total of just over 18,000. Turnstile attendance, which is they make a tick every time somebody walks through the doors, whether it's the same person five times a day, was up almost 10%. Wow. It was crazy. I don't have the exact numbers, but I may put them on the screen for you there so you can see them. Mm -hmm. So what did you guys think? This year compared to last year, this year overall, what uh, what stuck out to you? Anything in particular that you enjoyed, did not enjoy? I felt like there wasn't as many games that I was excited about this year. You know, I'd have to agree with that. And it, and it didn't really hit me until after we got back or we were driving back. I thought, you know, it was fun. I had a great time. Mm -hmm. But the games last year, I think overall, were better. It was just a better batch. That doesn't mean... There wasn't maybe one particular game that was great mm -hmm. and stood out above maybe even anything last year. It's just as a general rule overall. Is that kind of the feeling you got too? Yeah, and I think it reflects in our game hall. Um, what we came home yeah, with, I, I didn't, didn't bring home as many games as I did last year. My game hall was packed yeah. last year, and this year it was only about half full. Now, I did buy smaller games, so there was more of these smaller boxes. True. But it was still only half full. Yeah, I have more of those as well. But yeah. I think overall I bought a little bit less than last year as mm -hmm. well. Ryan, you bought a little bit more. That's because you had more money. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I think I spent as... I got as many items, but for a little bit less. One of the differences I noticed between last year and this year is in, that the vendor hall was, a, I think, about a third of the size larger than it was last year. It was definitely bigger. It was, it was, de yeah, definitely bigger. Um, they kind of rearranged things a little bit and moved the gaming areas and moved the vendor hall. And uh, the, I noticed that the hall was significantly larger, and there was just more, more to look at and yeah. more to see for sure. And it was still full. Yes. And they still had a couple of the vendors that spilled out into the gaming hall they areas. They sure did. Yeah. Which I think they, I think those companies do that on purpose. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't asked them, but I think they, they kind of do that because it gives them a little bit of extra time in the morning, extra time in the evening to showcase things More and show demos, people their games. Sick and yeah. Stuff, yeah. yeah, that kind of thing. Another thing that I'm starting to realize is that I am not a big fan of when a publisher decides to do a limited release of a game at a convention where we've only got a certain amount of copies mm -hmm. and either you get it or you don't. If you don't want to be a person who runs really fast, really early in the morning, <laughs> then sorry. Right. I don't, I just, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I'm realizing that to me that is, I think it's, well, it's not even about it being fair. Or maybe it is. I just don't like it. I am not the type of person who feels like they have to run and possibly interfere and push other people around mm -hmm. to get a game that I want. I think that's silly. The, unfortunately, there's a lot of people who have no issue doing that. Mm -hmm. You know who you are. And because of that, you know, you tend to miss out on some things. And I just, I don't know. I just, what do you think about that? I mean, do you agree with that? Do you not care? I don't like it either. And the reason why I don't like it, and I really don't understand it, is I would think if you want people to buy your game, have some copies. I mean, if you're only yeah. going to have like 25 or 50 available and you know there's 100 or 200 people that want your game, why would you not bring 200 copies? Well, and I think sometimes it is legitimately because they can only get a hold of a few pre-release copies from whoever is mass-producing the game. Mm -hmm. I get that. 
I also get the fact that you want to create buzz around a game as mm. well. And this is one way to do it. But I don't know. I just, for me, I don't I don't like it. I'm with you. But generally, I, I think the show went well. I think uh, things were organized pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were able to get around and see what we wanted to see, do what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Saw a lot of great games. Mm-hmm. First things first. Let's talk about the giveaway. We did a giveaway uh, for Origins 2018, and the contest ended midnight on the 19th. I woke up the 20th in the morning, and I randomized the winner. And the winner is Mark Wynn. Mark W-Y-N-N. Congratulations. Mark Wynn, you win. Yeah, I know. Right. That worked out really well. <laughs> Congratulations, Mark. We are going to be reaching out to you. In fact, by the time you see this video, you may have already gotten some correspondence from us. Um, so there you go. You have won a In Shrink wrap copy of Shogunate, Shogunate, or Shogunate, I think is the other accepted pronunciation. Very cool game. We talked about it earlier. Uh, there are reviews and things out there if you want to give it a, a look-see. But yeah, congratulations, Mark. We'll be getting that game to you as quickly as possible. Congrats, Mark. So this year's video is going to be two videos. We are going to split this up into... Uh, this video will be what we just talked about. You know, just the overall thoughts of the, the show, things like that. And we're going to talk about the games that we played. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, maybe not all of them. And then the next video is going to be the games that we purchased. Mm-hmm. Our final thoughts... And we're going to introduce another giveaway. Yes. So giveaway number two will be coming up in the next video, which we'll post shortly after this one for the Origins 2018 wrap-up games we bought and final thoughts. So this list will go in no particular order as far as, you know, when we played them. It's just, I'm just going to spew the games that we, that we played. We're going to talk <laughs> about them a little bit, move on to the next one, rapid fire. I keep saying that we're going to do this quick. We never do this quick. <laughs> Why do I keep saying that? We're not so good at the quick. (laughs) No. No, we enjoy hearing ourselves talk. These are basically just first impressions of the games, kind of the overall what we thought on a first playthrough or a demo, and whether or not it'd be something that we would want to pursue further. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first game that I demoed this game was called Barbarian Battlegrounds, which is a very acute game with a very cute theme and adorable artwork about these little bears. You play a bear and you roll dice, and the dice let you gather resources and attack the heck out of your neighbors. I didn't like it. Um, <laughs> it it's, for what it was trying to be, I felt like it was, and maybe that was the, what they were going for, was this cute little sweet little game where you just beat the heck out of each other. Mm-hmm. But to me, that's not very much fun. It was cleverly put together. It was done pretty well. Mm-hmm. And like I said, the artwork was really nice, but it just wasn't wasn't my kind of game for sure. If that sounds like something that you would enjoy, check it out because I think, like I said, it was done really well. It was kind of fun the way you rolled dice and you could stack dice. So if you rolled a lot of the same number, you could use that same number and stack them on the dice on top of each other on your player board, which is behind a screen, to, to kind of multiply the resources that you would get with that mm, number. So okay. it was kind of neat. Some of the stuff they did was neat, but at the end of the day, not really for me. That's Barbarian Battlegrounds. All right, so in the Rio Grande room, we played a little game called Jump Drive, Mm -hmm. which is uh, from Rio Grande Games, Mm -hmm. and it is in the blank for the galaxy universe, race Mm -hmm. for the galaxy, roll for the galaxy. It's in that universe, so it uses a lot of the same thematic ties. It has a lot of the same iconography, even Mm -hmm. though there's much less in this game than in the other two games. And it's basically just a card game where Mm -hmm. you... Uh, you and you engine build, right? It's an engine building type of game where each mm-hmm. round you kind of build on the stuff you did the previous round. You round, you buy more cards, which builds up your empire, mm-hmm. which allows you to get more cards and more victory points, and it just builds on itself and it builds on itself until somebody hits fifty points and it's over. Yep, I liked it. I did too. It was a lot of fun. I was surprised. Um, I had heard other people talk about how neat this game was. It just didn't seem like it was going to be that much meat on the bone. Mm-hmm. But it was really good. I was impressed. Um, it was certainly something that I would play again. Um, <laughs> I like that grin. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, what did you think of Jump Drive? I don't know. You you didn't... I liked it, but I, my engine was starting too late in the game. That's true. And that yeah, does happen a lot of times in engine building mm-hmm. games. That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, I think with more plays, you might wrap your... I feel like you were having trouble wrapping your head around what your strategy was going to be mm-hmm. at the beginning as well, right? Well, I just had craft cards. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You had craft cards. <laughs> 
Which I, also happens in games like this. Sometimes yes, it does. you just get, if you don't get the right cards, you are not going to have a good engine. Yeah, things that don't work well with each other that that does happen sometimes. Mm-hmm. So, but I, I think it was really fun. Um, if engine building and just simple card mechanics where you're kind of using these cards to play off of and you know do other things and build other things. If that sounds like fun to you, yeah, definitely this one's worth checking out. Even if you're not big on Race for the Galaxy or Roll for the Galaxy. Yeah, I would agree. But that was Jump Drive from Rio Grande Games. The next one I want you guys to talk about a little bit because I really didn't get to play it, and that is Senshi. This was a demo that we did uh, at... Uh, Arcane Wonders. Thank you, Arcane Wonders. Um, they did have it for sale, but what did you guys think of it? Because you, you both played it, I did not. And it was also in my uh, anticipated games yes. for Origins, so I was looking forward to seeing what it was like. Mm-hmm. So Ryan and I demoed the game with two other people, so we got to play a four-player game. And so you could either study or... Teach. Teach, no, train, train. or test. Uh, so studying was bringing a pile of three... Into your tokens area. into your area. Training was taking a token off of someone else's board, the top token only. And testing was taking a pile that was in your hand and using one of those colors, you would place that color into your test pile. And anything on your board and everyone else's board that is that color would then go into that pile for scoring. And it was a very interesting game. It was interesting in your choices of when you would study and when you would train and, and if you would take something from someone else. I I liked the game, but I didn't like it as much as I thought I would like. It was it was cute, but I, I didn't see myself wanting to buy it and play it over and over again. Yeah, it's basically an abstract. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, with a little bit of theme pasted on, which I appreciate. You know, I would much rather do something like that or play something like that than something that is just completely abstracted uh, and has no thematic ties to anything whatsoever. Yes. I don't know why. I just feel like <laughs> I have to have some sort of investment in in some sort of story or yeah. whatever. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like I said, it was a cute game. And if you like abstract type games and it sounds like something that would be for you, absolutely check it out. It just... Unfortunately, I was hoping it was going to be something I was going to end up purchasing, and it just it, it didn't catch me the way I thought it was going to catch. Right. Calliope Games always has, and I'm assuming this is at every convention they go to, a pretty sizable space where they have very enthusiastic people doing their best to pull you in to demo their games. Mm-hmm. And their demos are always free. Uh, just come on in, play a game, because they figure if they can get you sitting down and playing the game, you're... Odds are you're going to buy it, right? Mm-hmm. That's their that's their deal, and they do a really good job at that. They really do. The game that we played, one of them that we played with Calliope Games was Dicey Peaks. Mm-hmm. Dicey Peaks is a uh, a game where it's a modular board that is set out at the beginning of the game, kind of in a pyramid, but it's it's a mountaintop, right? Mm-hmm. And it's more right. at more of uh, level one uh, tiles at the bottom. Fewer level twos, fewer level threes, and then four and five until it just hits a peak, right? And what you're doing is you're Pressing your luck, rolling dice, and looking for different symbols to be able to progress your token down the track. And whenever you land on a tile that has not been explored yet, you flip it over and things happen. Either good things or bad things. It's very simple. Yeah. And basically you're in a race to get to the top because the first person up there is going to get to turn over one of the top tiles to see if you found the red flag. Yeah. And if you find the red flag, you win. Hooray. Hooray. It's simple. It's, It's easy to teach, easy to learn, and it's... Uh, it's beautiful production, which mm-hmm. Calliope usually is. Sure Super is, thick yeah. tiles, mm-hmm. right? Um, the dice are beautiful. Mm-hmm. I am terrible at press your luck games. I've learned this. This is a common known fact now uh, because I just can't. I can't. You can't stop. I can't stop myself. <laughs> it's like I'll just go one more time. Just go one more time. Just go one more time, and then bust. It'll be okay. I'll, that, I'll be fine. No. I, <laughs> So this is what happens to me. But this game was great. We had such a blast sitting there playing it. Ryan, what did you think of it? I liked it, even though I was pretty far back. I didn't yeah. get to there. Oh, I didn't get to the peak either. <laughs> I wasn't even close. First try, yeah. up at the summit. Yeah. Kathy got to the summit, flipped over one tile, won the game. It was great, but it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot yeah. of fun. The race, the, the whole race was fun. Not, it wasn't just fun to win. It was fun trying to get there first. It was yes. really cool. Yeah. Yes. So if that sounds cool to you, that's Dicey Peaks from Calliope Games. Okay, the next one that I want to talk about is Pyramids of Penguin, or Pyramid of Penguin, mm-hmm. uh, which is a rethemed 
game that has been around for years, actually, called yeah. Pyramids. That was kind of a, a, a well, it's still a mummy mm -hmm. theme, but this time they said it in the Ice Cool universe, yeah. and Brain Games has taken the license for it. So basically, you have a vertical board uh, that's magnetized. All of the pieces are magnetized, and it's a magnetized, and it's a one versus many game. One person plays as the mummy; the rest of the players choose a penguin, and they are playing as one of the penguins. Mm -hmm. And you're basically going through this maze that the players can see on one side, and it is a mirror image on the other side that the mummy is playing against. He cannot see where the players are located in the mm -hmm. map, but the, the players, the penguins, can see where the mummy is at all times. The players are trying to move around the maze to get to certain treasures that they have in their hand, in the hand of cards. If they ever do that, successfully uh, find all five of them, then they win the game. Mm -hmm. So that's the many part. The mummy is trying to capture four, what are they, what were they? Torches. Torches. Every, every player has three of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when the mummy gets onto a space, it magnetizes the penguin yes. to, on top of it. Yes. And they are caught, and they must go to the tomb, and they restart from there to try to get... You and know. then they give the mummy one of their torches, and then the mummy gets a total of four torches from all players, and the mummy wins. Yes, and I think that's variable depending on the number of players. Yes. Oh, I how see. How many torches okay. that the mummy has to get. But it's a it's a cute game. Mm -hmm. It's really well... The pieces can be a little bit fiddly. The penguin pieces are pretty small. Mm -hmm. uh, but the concept is really cool. There's a reason why this game's been around for a long yeah. time, right? Mm -hmm. We really liked it. Ryan, you really liked it, right? Yeah. And well, this was on my number one anticipated. This yes. was my... Number two? One. Was it one? It was one. Unfortunately, this game happened to be what? Sold, Sold out. Sold out by the time we got a chance to demo it and really find out that yeah. we liked it. Ryan yeah. did win. He whooped yeah. us. He was the mummy and he whooped us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I but was I was surprised. I feel like it's pretty even because I know a lot of one versus many is very lean towards the... One. Yeah, or mm -hmm. or there's just balancing issues in general. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Where it's either unbalanced towards the one mm -hmm. or towards the many. Yeah. But and yeah, you're right. It was pretty balanced because yeah. Kathy and I were both one card away yes, we were. Yeah. from winning and he got his last torch mm -hmm. and that was it. So yeah, it was pretty cool. I liked it. <laughs> so will you be picking this one up later maybe? Yes. That's Pyramid yes. of Pink Queen <laughs> from Brain Games. Okay, next one to talk about is called Unearth. This game's been around for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a year? Yeah. Maybe Gen Con last year. I think Gen year Con last year was when it was. Yeah. And this is a this is one Kathy was really looking forward to seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, even she knew it wasn't a new game. Um, I really I had heard about it before, but didn't really know much about it. Mm -hmm. It's a dice game, okay, where you are as a player rolling a handful of dice and then allocating one of those dice to a location on the board mm -hmm. in order to add up pips to reach a certain threshold that will allow you to take that card and get victory points. And then you're doing set collection off of those cards by color, landscape type, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. And then there's special ability cards that you can gain if you lose out on a place where you had dice, things, things like that. Things to help you manipulate your dice or manipulate someone else's dice, yes. things like that. Yes, A really neat concept. Mm -hmm. I was impressed by the production. Mm -hmm. I was impressed by the design itself, but did not like the fact that there was not, to, to me, there wasn't enough ways for me to mitigate my die rolls because I am horrible at rolling dice. It kind of is. always <laughs> roll low. So if there's a game where I can either mitigate really well or, I, or rolling low actually has an advantage in certain cases, I do just fine. But if it's basically the higher you roll, the better you're going to do, I'm usually in Best. trouble because mm -hmm. it just doesn't, I, I, don't, I don't really like that kind of thing. So having said that though, what did you think of it? I really liked it. Yeah. I just... I, I thought so. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about dice anyway. And I love the fact that it's not just a bunch of six-sided dice. They had four-sided, eight-sided, yes. six-sided. That and was neat. Yeah. It was really cool. It wasn't just a bunch of D6s. Yeah. So it was it was having that variety. Um, and you can choose which die you want to... If you're something you really want to go for and you're really hoping for a high number, you can take that eight-sided die and hope for a big number and, and try to take area control. Mm-hmm. Uh, for over other people, so that eight set of die will help you potentially have a higher number and be able to have the majority and be able to take that right. from someone else who might be going for the same right. uh, one you're going for. Yeah. And unfortunately, this one was also... Sold out. Yeah. It's it's this limited release thing that we talked about in the beginning. I well, and But this one's been around for a while. I don't... 
know what they were thinking. They had a huge demo area for this game. Mm -hmm. They had like two or three tables of it. They had to ship more games in because mm -hmm. they sold so many. I just, I don't understand how you could not be prepared for that or if it was by Especially design. since it wasn't brand new. It should right. have, they should have had enough, I would have yeah, thought. But. I don't get it. But it was a clever game. It was really well done. Beautiful production. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that one thing is was a hang up for me. I would play it again for sure. Mm -hmm. Ryan, what did you think? I'll of buy it? it. He'll play it. It's okay. Uh, if she buys it, I'll play. It. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I I liked it. I like that you have variable dice. Mm -hmm. That's not just six sided dice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was pretty cool. You don't yeah. see that a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, outside of the role playing world, right? Role playing game mm -hmm. arena. Right. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That was yeah. Unearth. Next, we played Cahoots, which is a really neat little trick taking game mm -hmm. in which you are going to be opponents with and partners with everyone else in the game. Yeah. I know, sounds weird. But basically, you're going to get a card at the beginning of the game that has three different suits on it. So you just have a deck of cards that has six, I think it's six different suits. Mm -hmm. And you're going to share one suit with every other player. That's kind of how the whole thing was designed. So I might be working with you on clubs, but against you on everything else working with this person on stars, but against them on everything else. So you're trying to, as you go through this game, you win a trick by just there being, there's no trump, there's just whatever has the most value at the end of a trick, after everybody has played two cards, wins the trick, and then the people who are invested in that suit that won the trick will split up the cards that were used, half the cards that were used to take that trick. After everybody around the table keeps one card by putting it back in their hand and burning a card out of the game. Mm -hmm. Super Very neat. Very interesting how the tricks play out because of what gets either thrown away or put back in your hand. I just love the whole idea of it. It's it's interesting to me because I, in my brain, I understand trick-taking games and how you're supposed to mitigate your hand and how to, you can take tricks and you think, okay, well, I can get so many tricks because this is what I have. But it totally changes the game when things get discarded and things get put back in your hand and you could play it again and you're playing against this person and now you're playing with that person. And yeah. It's yeah. very interesting. And table talk is encouraged in this kind oh, of game. Oh, yeah. It's like, like, come what on are we now. Doing? Let's, or you throw something out there to entice somebody to go against what their current plan is. And mm -hmm. it's just a lot of really neat things that can happen. But yeah, I, if you're a trick taking game player, or you like card games. I think this one is, you got to give this one a look. Absolutely. Because it's, it's just different and unique enough, but it's still a trick taking game. I think it's really going to yeah. be something you're going to, you're going to want to see it at least. Ryan, thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> That's cahoots. Next was a game called Brew Dice. So mm -hmm. when we were uh, demoing Dicey, Dicey Peaks, Peaks. Mm -hmm. the designer of Brew Dice and also the designer of a game called Sports Dice Baseball, which we've done a review for, for and it will be linked in the upper right-hand corner here, uh, Andy Germania, I think is how you pronounce his name, he demoed the game with us. Just sat down and we're like, hey, I know you. Um, <laughs> So after we were done with Dicey Peaks, we walked over to a different room and he showed us Brew Dice, which is his latest release, which is a super simple speed game. Yeah. Everybody gets three dice, roll dice as fast as you can and re-roll them to match conditions that are on a card that gets flipped over. And if you match it first, you grab that card. You play to whoever gets five cards first and that's the game. And thematically, it's all uh, like one die has the different shapes of the beer container. Another die has shapes of the different snacks that are on that card alongside of that container of beer, right? Mm -hmm. And the third item is the shape of the coaster that the beer is sitting on, mm -hmm. the, the third die. So that's your three dice and you're rolling and you're, you're just trying to, as quickly as you can, match those three things. If you can, you grab the card. Super silly. Um, Frustratingly amazing. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Uh, yes, Ryan did play it, even though it's a it's a, a themed with a alcohol type of thing. You know, whatever, right? It's it it's was a, a dice game. It's, it's a, a dice, game. dice game. It's a speed it is, dice yeah. game. That's all it is. It could right? have any theme on it, and it would be the same game. It's yeah. really cute. I like the theme. It's pretty cool. Uh, every card has a different real microbrewery beer. Uh, featured on it. I, I think Andy is a big uh, microbrew mm -hmm. fan, so that's mm -hmm. kind of what is the story behind there. Really uh, clever idea. Yeah, yeah, but it was good. It was a lot of fun. I mean, we people kept were staring at us because we sat down at this table and we're playing this game and we're hooping and hollering and yelling and, oh, you got that card. <laughs> it, it, I just it, got it. You yeah, beat me. It, it's just fun. It's one of those things. And Ryan, too, he was making a scene. <laughs> Sometimes you have to watch this guy. I'm telling you. And you could tell that Andy was getting a kick out of us 
getting a kick out of the game. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We might hear more about that one in the future on this channel. Uh, it, it's yeah, it's it was just really really good. We liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. That's Brew Dice. We also played a game called Scuttle, which is. I don't want to say it's a trick-taking game. It's a, it's a uh, draw a card, play a card mm -hmm. type of game, right? So you start out with a certain number of cards. On your turn, you draw one, you play one. And in this game, you either play the card for its value, its face value, or you play it for its ability. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to get be, to be the first one to get 21 or more points. And then the end game is triggered immediately, that person wins. But there's really some neat things that the cards do, how they interact with each other, how you interact with the other players. Mm -hmm. it can be a little mean, but it's a fast game. Mm -hmm. And as we've said a million times, we don't like mean in big sprawling games, but mean in little games, little quick games, not a problem Not a big deal. What did you think of uh, Scuttle, Kathy? I thought it was cute. Yeah. I liked the, the hardest part for me was wrapping my head around the fact that the face cards, the Jack, Queen, and King, did not have a value. So you're used to them being like the highest value. Yeah. And you're going to be able to use that towards your 21 points, but you can't. Those are cards that only have an ability, but they're really good abilities. Good abilities, right. Yeah, like the queen that allows you to not have any of your cards stolen, which can happen in the game. Right, a lot of card stealing, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kings let you have triple your points that you have on the board, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. so, it, it, so it was a really cute game. I liked it. Yeah. I like to play it again. Ryan, I would ask you what you thought, but you didn't play it, did you? No, I didn't. Okay, no. I Again, I like those small little games that, that mm -hmm. you can just... Break out, play in mm -hmm. 10, 15, 20 minutes. Right. Uh, wherever, at a restaurant, something like that. Liked it a lot. So mm -hmm. that was... Scuttle. 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 Uh, we also played a game called Cave Paintings. This is from r and Games. It's a drawing game, which <laughs> a lot of times I don't like. Right? There are a few exceptions. Telestri Telestrations is one of them. Definitely, yep. Uh, but this one, what sets it apart is that each player is going to be getting six words that they must draw. Okay, and you have a, a mat in front of you that you draw on, you get your dry erase marker, and you say go, everybody's got six words, and you start drawing these words, right? Well, in this game, it's called Cave Paintings, you must draw with the marker in your fist, like this, on the thing, right? You can't be real meticulous and draw it real nice, no, nope. it's cave paintings. You draw like this, right? And that's the that's the, the hook of the game. It's very clever. Mm -hmm. It's very fun. The pictures are hilarious when everybody gets done. So and it it evens the playing field for those people who know how to draw. Artists. Yeah. yeah. It is definitely one of those games that ends up being more of an activity than a game because there is a point structure. Basically what you do when everybody gets done is you pass the boards around from player to player and you then mark on a little another little piece of paper what you think that person has drawn, all six things, if they got that far. And you get points and they get points depending on how many things you get right and wrong. It's a riot though. Oh yeah. It's just a really good time. Uh, Ryan hated it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so you did? <laughs> I wish I would have taken more pictures of our drawings so could I, I could include them in B-roll right now, but I did not do that for some we reason. We were having because, so much fun, we just completely forgot. And that's how it should be, right? If you're having a lot of fun and you forget about the fact, oh, I need to tweet this or I need to do this, then you're having a good time. That's and right. it's a good game. And that's Cave Paintings from r, r Games. Next is Welcome To, which is the roll and flip, or excuse me, the flip and write. Mm -hmm. It's like a roll and write game, but you're flipping cards instead of rolling dice right. and, or drafting dice or whatever. Uh, this was a big, this is one of the hotness games. But this was one that, uh, like I said, was, was a limited release. They had 25 copies each day. So as soon as the vendor, vendor hall opened, you had to hightail it over to the Deepwater Games booth. And it wasn't in the front. Yeah. <laughs> and get in line, and then they would hand out tokens. And if you didn't get there quick enough, then too bad, so sad. Right. Uh, but we did demo the game because they had it out there, and it really was good. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as much as I disliked their distribution process, the game spoke for itself. It really did. It was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, you have three columns to choose from in any given round that have in them a number that you're going to use to write on one of your rooftops on your player mat and an action that you will take. You don't have to do the action, but most times you're going to want to because they right. let you do certain things that let you score more points. Right. Whatever the case may be. Cheat a little bit on your board to make things work out better in your favor. And it's just really well done. I feel like this was as next level a roll and write as we've seen. 
there's a lot of really interesting decisions to make in Absolutely. this game. And I think that's what I like about it and probably what you like that's about exactly it. That's exactly what I like about it. Yeah. Yep. It, it had more thinking than just rolling a dice and, and writing something down. One. Yeah. Because you had other options and other actions that you could do to mm-hmm. mitigate where your how your neighborhood was building up to get more points. I, I don't know. I just really, really enjoyed playing it. Yeah. Um, and I definitely want to play it again. Yeah. Ryan, I felt like you had a little bit of a struggle at first yeah. trying to... And I don't know if it was a strategy or if it was just... Did you feel like it was too much roll and write? Or, to, or do you not like your roll and writes to be that thinky? Or did you did you end up liking it by the time we were done? Um, I just was not... I was messing myself up. Well, me. so... So, so it, just, it was poor choices and how yes, you were placing poor things? Choices. Well, it was your first time playing that. Yeah. Sure. Right? And so if you, you played it again, you'd know, do it different next time. Yeah. yeah. That's to be expected. Absolutely. Did you like it, though? Yes, I did. You did like it. Okay, good, good. I was, so you do want to play it again? Yes. Perfect. Good. I think he just got himself to the point where he was frustrated with the moves that he had made and he yeah. couldn't do anything. Yeah. That's, where it, that's what I was getting you from You can it. paint yourself in a corner in this game oh, big yes, time. Oh, yes, you can. Big time, which I think that's what you did, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. It actually caused our game to end earlier than it might have, too. Yeah. Which is, I'll let you discover that on your own if you like the rolling rights and this sounds good to you. But that is from Deepwater Games, Welcome To. Welcome To. Okay, next we played a little card game called Straight Eight, which is uh, just a little number sequence game, card game, that was developed and, and is sold independently by this family, the cutest family that mm-hmm. you'll ever meet in your life. Basically, the, it's just a bunch of numbered cards. It's not sequentially numbered. There are some duplicates in the game, but what you're trying to do is put down cards on the table that will fit in sequences of the board. There are limitations on this. So if I play a two, I can play a three, but I cannot play a, f- and I can play a four, but I can't play a five because there's no multiplication table value that would get you from two to five. So if I played one, I could play five, and then I could play ten. It's weird. But it's really neat how it works. Mm-hmm. So you have three cards, in, three cards in your hand all the time, mm-hmm. is it? Yes, yes it's three. And then it, again, you draw one and you play one. The first person to get seven cards laid down eight in cards. a. Eight cards. Is it eight? Yeah, yeah straight eight up. cards. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> get these cards laid down yeah. on the table in front of you, in legal positions. Wins the game. Yep. You must go left to right. You must start. You must go from low to high. Again, you can paint yourself in the corner in this game. You kind of can. But it's really good. It's clever. It's just, one, again, one of those little games you can take out, take over to your family's house. This is a good one for people who don't game. People who have only ever done, like, the Unos and the Connect Fours and the... Uh, Monopolies and Sorries. Well, Monopoly's not even a game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but if, if, if those... You could introduce this game to people like that, and it would be... I think it would go over well. It's it's cute. I think it was just really cleverly done. We liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. You liked it? Yes, because I won. You won. <laughs> is that the litmus test? If I won, I liked it? No, I know who the litmus test is for that. That would be our mother. Uh, Kathy yes. and I's mother. Absolutely. If, if she wins, the game's the best game that was ever designed in the entire <laughs> world. If she loses, it's a horrible piece of trash and should never darken her door again. But we all liked this one. Uh, I'm not sure what the name of the designer is, but it'll be, or the company is, it'll be on the bottom of the screen. The name of the game is Straight Eight. All right, so talk about polar opposites. We just talked about a really simple little card game. The next one I want to talk about is a game called Broadhorns, which is a mm. bigger, sprawling, it's not super heavy, but it's a it's a bigger game mm-hmm. uh, from Rio Grande Games. And this one is about early trading on the Mississippi River. Yep. Broadhorn is an early form of a barge. It's a wooden little boat type thing that has it's kind of flat that you put a bunch of stuff on and people guide it down the river and you take it from city to city and you sell stuff and you put more stuff on it and that's what the game's about it's a pickup and deliver game Mm -hmm. which normally i don't like Mm -hmm. but this one is just fun number one it's beautiful to look at absolutely number two i'm kind of invested in the theme because of where we're from there's a lot of those little cities along the mississippi river that Mm -hmm. are kind of it starts in st louis and goes all the way down to new orleans via the mississippi so we know all those little towns in there and yeah it's really cool so, yeah, it's, it's just a lot of fun. You can pick up goods in one town or at the beginning of your journey, move down the board. You take a certain, certain number of actions on your turn uh, to accomplish these missions and deliver these goods down farther uh, down in the river. And there are special cards that give you different abilities and things like that. There's mm-hmm. only a certain number of spaces you have on your broad horn to mm-hmm. hold these goods. They can spoil over time if you don't get them delivered fast enough. Mm-hmm. A lot of really neat things going on. It was pretty neat. Um, and I really liked it. I had a lot of fun with it. It's the type of game that, to me, is one of those to bring out. That's kind of your staple game. For, that's the big game you're playing for the night kind yep. of thing, right? What do yep. you guys think of it? 
Well, uh, if you hadn't bought it, I would have. Oh, okay. Good. Good to know. <laughs> so you liked it. I really did. It was yeah. really good. It's, you know, your typical middleweight year old that I really liked. Yes. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And like you said, I'm not a big pickup and deliver either. But the, the I guess the theme really sold it for me and the, helped. Yeah, the theme helps and when it's done well. Yeah. There's some pickup and deliver that's just not done very well. It was good. It was good. And that is... Broadhorns. Broadhorns. <laughs> okay, the next one we played is was a prototype uh, of a game called Darwinots. This one is designed by uh, Chris Bryan. If you know who he is, he has his own uh, YouTube channel. He is a content creator in the board game industry. And he has even produced a web series called Board With Life, mm -hmm. which is not in production right now, although I don't know that it's 100% for sure that it's never going to happen again. But it is, if, it's, a, it's, it's definitely more for adult audiences as opposed to kids. It's not really a family-friendly thing per se, but, but it is a funny show. It's a clever show. And if you're in board games and you have not seen it, you should really check out a couple of episodes because it, it's pretty entertaining. Uh, but Chris Bryan, he has designed a game called Darwinots. It's a really unique little theme where uh, you're trying to, I forget what you're trying to do but the, as scientists, but then you end up opening up portals to other dimensions and you're trying to research these really strange and unique creatures that are in these other dimensions by building up your tableau via tile laying mm -hmm. with tiles that have multiple terrain types on them and then you're trying to piece these terrain types together and then lay workers on there to, in order to and pull workers off in order to gather the resources of that type mm -hmm. of those types right. those resources then allow you to either uh, document or uh, record is it document to discover record? Or discover record. or record mm -hmm. those different creatures, which then you collect those cards and then gain points. What's even more clever than that is at a certain point in the game, you're going to hit a certain tile that when it gets revealed, now instead of building up the the um, the tableau, you are tearing it apart. The yeah. portal is closing into this dimension, so you're trying as fast as you can to, to record these these uh, these creatures. Before right? it's all gone. <laughs> Before it's all gone. And then when the, you know when you get down to a certain level of the uh, uh, the play surface, then the the game is over. You count up points. Mm. I liked it. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really good, even in a prototype form, which it was a decent prototype. Uh, but obviously, all the artwork was not complete. None of that mm -hmm. stuff was done. But I think it just played really well. It played really easy, mm -hmm. really smooth. Yeah. It is going to be on Kickstarter later this year. And again, that's Chris Bryan is his name. He's going to be publishing this with Green Couch Games, I believe. As far as an exact date, I don't know. I liked it enough where I'm going to be keeping uh, close watch on his channel because I think that's where it's eventually you're going to hear about when it gets fully announced and when the dates are going to be for Kickstarter and that kind of thing. But I liked it a lot. I thought mm -hmm. it was really good. Mm -hmm. And that's Darwinots from Chris Bryan. All right. So we need to talk about Sailing Toward Osiris, which was my number two anticipated game for Origins. Wasn't I thought it was two? your three and my number two. Oh, it was. It was my number three. And my number two. Sorry. I don't have that <laughs> list. I don't have that list in front of me anymore. I threw it in a trash can. <laughs> but, but, uh, but I was very much looking forward to it. And we sat down to demo the game, and just in a nutshell, I was not nearly as impressed as I thought I was going to be. Mm -hmm. It was all there, right? The package was there. The, the Euro strategy nature of it was there. The mm -hmm. resource gathering was there. Mm -hmm. The abilities were there. It just had some neat stuff, but in the end, it just kind of fell flat for me. I know, and I really can't tell you why. I can't either. Because <clears throat> if you would have said everything, like because it was both in both of our top five, everything was there that would attract us to a game. Yep. Make us say, ooh, I really like this yep. game. Exactly. It just wasn't there. It didn't happen. It did not connect. And sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. You can look at it as a good thing or a bad thing. It's bad because there was this game that I really thought I was going to like, but I didn't like. Mm -hmm. On the plus side, I saved 60 bucks. I'm good not point. saying it's a bad game either. It just fell flat for me. Yeah. And Kathy. And, yeah. And possibly Ryan. Unfortunately, that one missed the mark that's mm -hmm. sailing toward Osiris. One that did hit the mark though, at least to me, was Sunset Over Water. Wow. This one is just a sight to behold on the table. It's a grid Beautiful. of 25 cards that are a landscape Beautiful. artwork. Yes. Beautifully done landscape artwork, yes. So it's hand management and uh, set collection, I mm -hmm. guess would be it's kind definitely of set collection, yeah. mm -hmm. what you're doing. You just have one little guy and he sits out on the board and you play a card, simultaneous reveal. The time that's on the card determines player order. The, there's a movement markers on the card which denote which ways you can and cannot move and how far mm -hmm. on the tableau. Mm -hmm. And then the final thing is 
what you can collect when you're doing that. Mm -hmm. so it's done well though. It's put together really well. Mm -hmm. uh, the design is good. The artwork it just adds to it, mm -hmm. right? The theme, if you can call it a theme, really. <laughs> but it is it's beautiful. It's just, it, it's one of those games that you can just sit and play and you don't even necessarily have to be paying super close attention to. Just have a chat with somebody, have a cup of coffee. It is a little bit of a table hog, but you could probably get away with this one at a coffee house, I would think. I think no more than like code names. Code names is a little bit smaller cards. A little bit smaller it, cards, yeah. You still have the five by five grid, you just do. a little bit larger cards, and it's really not that much you of do. a table hog. Yeah. And this one's prettier than code Way names. Way prettier. <laughs> You liked it then? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I thought yeah. The, the the scenery alone, just looking at the cards, which is like, I don't know, like seeing all the different mountains and, and waterfalls, it just kind of took you away a little bit, yeah. you know? Yeah, but it's not a mindless activity either. No. There's some good decisions to be made Absolutely. in this game as well. Ryan, dig it? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Go the ahead. artwork was amazing. Yes, mm -hmm. and it still is. <laughs> <laughs> That's sunset over water. All right, how about Lady and the Tiger? Lady and the Tiger is a little micro game, an 18 card micro game, which well, those were all the rage a few years ago, but you don't see as much of them anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is actually like five or six games in one, I wanna say. There's ways to play that are two player only. There's a solo variant. There's one variant that plays up to six, and it's all using these same 18 cards that have, speaking of artwork, mm -hmm. just phenomenal artwork. Uh, but basically it's red cards and blue cards, that have ladies or tigers, right? And then how these cards interact with each other is how you play the different variants of the game. We only played one variant, which was the, the, the larger player count variant. Mm -hmm. And it's very similar to a game called Skull or Skull and Roses. I think this one drew me in just because of the uh, uniqueness, right? Mm -hmm. The artwork was amazing to look at. There are five different games that you can play in this thing with different player counts and it's just, that's the kind of stuff, I, I dig that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I like the uniqueness of it. I'd never seen anything like that before. So it drew me in. Uh, I need to explore it some more uh, to know whether or not I could say that, oh, this is a great game or not. But I think it's definitely worth looking into. If that sounds intriguing to you, check it out. It's called Lady and the Tiger. We played another game on Kathy's most anticipated list, and it's called... The Legend of the Cherry Tree That Blossoms Every Ten Years, I think. Good job. I always make her do that because I don't want to stumble all over it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a uh, bag drawing game mm -hmm. where you pull small flower tiles out of a bag, and it's a press your luck yep. where you have up to three... Times three, three total pulls out three of three total pulls for a total of eight, no more than eight, no more than eight total tiles. And you do not want to get three of the same color. Yeah, if you do, you bust. Mm -hmm. I did that. However, a lot. if you pull black out of the bag, they are wild and they go for any other color that you would have pulled out already. Sure. So if you pull out a total of two blue and a black, you bust because you have three blue. Yes, I was good at that. Yeah, he was very good at that. Um, so what you do is you're pulling out the flowers until you decide you want to stop and not pressure luck anymore. And then you make decisions depending on what you've pulled out and what abilities you have with those colors that you have available, whether you either put them behind your screen or in front of your screen mm -hmm. or back in the bag. Yeah, there's abilities and limitations on those placements. Right. And there's different set collection depending on whether you're, you're right. looking at the tiles in front of in your front screen or behind. or behind your screen Right. at the end of the game for scoring. Right. I felt like it was a good game, but it was a good I game. don't think it was a great game. It was not a great game. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was it was it was something I was anticipating. However, after getting a play of it, it was a fun game, yeah. and I would probably play it again. But I wasn't gung ho for the game. Yeah, I could see this being gangbusters in certain groups. Mm -hmm. And it was obviously it's yellow, so the production is great. Oh yeah, the production was great. Uh, the scoring is is weird. It is weird. And what made it worse was that whoever played the game before us unintentionally walked off with the score pad. Yeah. So we were having to keep track of all the scoring in our heads as we went through it, which isn't horrible, but it makes but not it a super lot easy easier. either. <laughs> yeah, it makes it a lot easier when you have something to write it down on. But it just didn't it didn't really it didn't really strike me mm -hmm. as a game yeah. that was uh, needed to be in my collection. Ryan, did it need to be in your collection? No. We also played at the Calliope booth uh, a follow-up to a game that Ryan owns. He owns a game called Suro. We played the follow-up to that called Suro of the Seas, mm -hmm. which introduces 
some monsters. This is a this is a, a tile laying game where you are uh, playing as a character that follows along a path. As you're laying down tiles, you have to follow the path. And if you ever go off the board, you lose. You lose. Or if you ever in this one get eaten by a monster that's out on the board, you lose. Ryan, what did you think of Sir of the Seas? I liked it. I felt I liked that it added more to Sir. Yeah, I did too. But pretty much the difference is the monsters. If you really like something being in your way. <laughs> yeah, it gives that um, that element of impending doom, right? Mm -hmm. Because every at the end of every turn, every player's turn, right? Yeah, every player's turn. Yeah, mm -hmm. you roll a dice and the monsters move, so it's completely random where they're going to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> And even if move. you die... You continue to roll for the monster. Yeah, so, so you're yeah. Now, that's kind of cool. I, I like that pretty, idea. I lost pretty early, but I still got the roll and put monsters on the board. And then it was like, come on, monsters. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. They're, and and they're, that's so much better than in a game with player elimination having to sit there and watch everybody else yeah, play. It gives you play. something to do, which mm -hmm. is really good. It is clever. Yeah. At some point, this game might end up in my collection if it's on sale or something. Yeah, yeah it was mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's... Sorrow of the Seas. Next one we want to talk about is a little trick-taking game called Spy Tricks. This was on Ryan's most anticipated list at number... Two. Two? Spy Tricks is this game where each player gets a hand of cards, and you basically play those cards one person per round, per, per trick, right? and whoever has the highest card, whether that be in number or suit, uh, because in this particular game... Blue cards always beat white cards, and red cards always beat blue cards, and therefore red cards always beat white cards. So, you know, people could be playing white, 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 and you go, red, and you take the trick, right? Mm -hmm. And then in every trick, the player who had the highest ranked card and the lowest ranked card then place a pawn on a player mat, or on a, on a, uh, on a, on a mat that shows all the different cards and their values, in search of the hidden objective card, which there's one in every round, okay? So you, you get six cards per round, you play five of them, and then you reveal what the secret card is, and if you have guessed correctly either the number, the suit, or the exact card, you get points accordingly. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the whole game. And I had a blast with this game. I liked it a lot. Yes. Ryan, you too? Yes, I really like this game. Yeah. Uh, we may get some differing opinions from somebody on that side of the table on this one, though. The night that we played it, I don't know what was going on in my head. It just wasn't, I, for some reason, it was something that wasn't really tripping a trigger for me. Or yeah. so. I don't know why, but the more I thought about it after the fact, the more I think I want to try it again. Maybe yeah. it just was something that night that wasn't driving for me, but I you think You weren't getting good it. cards either. No, I really wasn't. It feels like you were right in the middle every single time, which was hindering you, hampering you for placing pawns out on the board and therefore mm -hmm. keeping you from being Or I would end up getting good tricks at the beginning when you have a whole lot of options and end up, towards the end, I wasn't getting an opportunity yeah. to get the more narrowed down options. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it was a little frustrating, but yeah. I think I think I'd like to try it again and, and before I, before, the jury's still out. Let's put sure. it that way. Sure, sure. I think this one is great in design, but it suffers in production value, unfortunately. Yes. It's just, it's really not good. Um, but the gameplay does make up for that somewhat, mm -hmm. so I definitely give it a pass. Check it out if you like trick-taking games, because this is another one of those where it kind of turns trick-taking on its head, which it I kinda like. It kind of does, yeah. Yes. yeah. And that's Spy Tricks. We're almost done. Next one is Monster Match. This is a really cute little kid's game. I call it a kid's game, but you know... The, the key to a good kids game is when adults play it Absolutely. and have a blast. And have fun, right? So this is the same universe as like your Happy Salmons and your Funky Chickens and those things, right? <laughs> uh, if you've played any of those. But if not, there will probably be more information on those on this channel coming up in the near future. But in this one, you basically have two dice. One has a bunch of numbers on it and one has, not a bunch of numbers, but a number on each side. And one has a body part. So you've got these cards laying out on the table that have pictures of monsters that have different numbers of eyes, different numbers of arms, different numbers of legs. Mm -hmm. When you roll, you're going to get a number and a body part. So it could be three eyes. And then you're looking around to see, find a card before anybody else that has three eyes. Maybe even not before anybody else, but just find a card with a monster that has three eyes. When you find it, Put your finger on it. And everybody's trying to do this. If you miss out, then you miss out. If you catch one, you get to take that card as a victory point. And you just play through this whole deck of cards 
Uh, sorry, the cards are not victory points. The cards have donuts in the lower right-hand corner. Yes. And those are your victory points. Right. So you may only have five cards, but if each of them has three donuts on it, and I've got ten cards, but they only got one donut on mm -hmm. each of them, then, you know, so you so see So being fast, fastest, isn't always the best. True. You might want to hang tight just a little bit and try to find one that's got three donuts versus one that's got the same amount of eyes exactly. on it. Exactly. So. And that's the neat part about what these people are doing with these these kids games at North Star Games and these other guys. It's just it's just great. It, that's the great thing about this industry. The attentiveness to those types of things where you want to be able to have everybody have an equal kind of a chance. Mm -hmm. You looking out for colorblind people. That's mm -hmm. why I love this hobby. But this one this one is super cute. Uh, we had a really good time with it. Um, there's not a whole lot else to say, Ryan. You liked it too, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and you would think, like I said, Ryan's 11, you would think, well, maybe he's a little too old for that. Not really. I'm 45. I liked it. It was fun. <laughs> Don't judge me. You're 45? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one we played was Grackles, which is another little abstract game uh, with a kind of a pasted-on theme. Grackles are birds, I guess, or crows, and I guess they're you're perching them on telephone lines or something like that? Yeah, phone that lines. Means? Yeah, telephone lines. Yeah, yeah. Telephone is a phone, just so you know. Right. But basically, you're laying tiles. Uh, that's one action that you can do on your turn. And then you are completing a row of your colored pieces if you're able to do so, if the conditions of the board allow that to happen in a straight line, where you can start and end a complete row no matter how many spaces are in between it. Pretty clever. Mm -hmm. I was kind of impressed. The production is kind of maybe not quite as great as I would want it to be, but the gameplay made up for it. Mm -hmm. right? It was simple to teach, simple to learn. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all convoluted, nope. and it just worked. And it was thinky enough. Yeah. Not super thinky, but thinky enough. Oh, yeah, that, good decisions. That engages you. Good so. decisions in this one, yeah, mm -hmm. which abstracts are kind of known for, but typically I don't gravitate towards them because of lack of theme and other things, but mm -hmm. I like this one quite a bit. What did mm -hmm. you think of it? Because it was on your anticipated list, right? My number four. Yeah. I would have bought it. After we played it. Oh, yeah, because it was on the Origins preview list from Board Game Geek as being for sale at Origins, and it was not and for it was sale not. at Origins. I don't Origins. think they had enough copies to sell. I don't think they had any copies. I think they just had those couple demo copies. Mm -hmm. Is really? the way they made mm -hmm. it sound. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So I don't think it was available for anybody at the show. But you did like it, huh? Yes, I did. Is it something that you may end up... It seems, seems like Fireside Games tend to make games that click with, with Ryan. Mm -hmm. it, that just seems to be the case. Because you've got a couple of them now, and this is another one that you're really interested in, right? Castle Panic and Hot Shots. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and now, now Grackles. Grackles. That was the last one we had to talk about. You guys remember this is part one in a two-part series of videos for Origins 2018. This is the one where we talked about the games that we played and just our overall thoughts on the convention, right? The next one is where we're going to discuss the games that we purchased. Mm -hmm. And our final thoughts on everything that happened, maybe some thoughts on next year, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So definitely stay tuned. We're also going to, in the second part of the video, do another giveaway. Woohoo! So we're going to give away another game. So if you're tired of looking at us, you don't really care about watching our videos, but you do want a free game, check stay that tuned. one out. Yeah, check that one out as well. So uh, in the meantime, if you guys like what you're seeing here, if you like what we're doing, please... Take a minute to like this video, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends. That's how we're going to grow this thing. We would really appreciate your help in that. Also, check us out on social media. Mm -hmm. Follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Facebook. We do have a web page that very rarely gets updated, unfortunately. But it's just, it's hard. There's a lot going on. Yeah. But yeah, definitely follow us on Twitter. We do a lot of activity on there. But yeah, the information should be on the top of the screen right here. So check that out. We would appreciate that. So again, watch part two of the video. Check that out. Get the details on the giveaway. Really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. And as always, if you're bored together, bored together, we will see you in the next one. Your insolence will be punished. And he liked it too, I think. He did. Yeah. Not that you care. You care your camera. I can't think. <gasps> My number 38 million. What did you think of Sorrow of the Seas? I will. I liked it. Oh, 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 oh,